Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and if you are new here, just a plain welcome then. Today we're going to be talking about the Netflix TV series The Witcher and its timeline. So, the Netflix TV series of The Witcher has some stuff that does align with the lore years and some stuff that does not align and we'll discuss that through each episode but basically I have been doing so much research and putting this together I have created a timeline that I'll leave the link to down below if you want to check it out all of my sources they will typically come from the same website but I did sort of get a few ideas from other areas as well but it's all linked down below, it's all sources to where each thing comes from and if I've changed it based on what is in that source, I typically reason why but I will be discussing that in this. There are spoilers ahead for the first season of The Witcher on Netflix but there aren't too many spoilers in regards to the lore side of things. My timeline however if you do check it out I do sort of preface that there is some spoilers in that uh, for certain links. But aside from that, we'll get into it. There are three main timelines that is followed across the season. So you have Ceres, you have Geralt, and you have Yennefer. Now, when you factor in like their birth years, it spans over the course of about 100 years. When you factor in the start of the timelines, the, the year that it starts, uh, which actually comes in in episode two, right through to the end of the last episode it spans about 50 years so and this is just me dealing with the best of the information that i have available to me especially because the netflix series itself doesn't necessarily give you years to work on but if you go based on law for a couple of things and based on what they say in some of those episodes, you're able to piece together information, which is what I am delving into basically. So, to start off with some fun facts, are uh, that Geralt is born in about 1160, making him at about 100 at the end of the season. Yennefer is born in about 1192, according to the Netflix series. She is um, about 20 years younger, according 20 years older, sorry, according to lore. And Siri, according to the TV show, is born in about 1250. And again, Law puts that a little bit later, but I will explain that much. Uh, I will explain that as we sort of delve into it. So, starting off, I'm going to go it, through it by episode by episode, as where each person's timeline is going. Each timeline is in chronological order. It's just that you've got multiple timelines happening in the same episode. In the first episode, uh, episode one, the end's beginning, you have Ciri's timeline starting here. Her timeline starts in 1263 and stays in 1263 as her entire timeline happens over the span of about a week and a half. This is when the massacre of Sintra happens. So if you go on to some of my sources, each segment for each character is kind of broken down. So for Siri, she's got she has five uh, main events that happen to her across the eight episodes, whereas Geralt and Yennefer actually have eight, or Yennefer has seven rather, because she's only in seven episodes. But they each have segments that are easily broken down. Siri is a little bit harder because she has certain events that happen to her across a couple of episodes. So we'll get into that though. But this is where the massacre of Sintra happens for her. On Geralt's timeline, he is starting in 1231. Now this is according to the fact that the Netflix side of things has Renfrey dying in 1231, which pinpoints that exact time. But also if you factor in a couple of things, they talk about Queen Calanthe and her Battle of Hockenbuzz. Queen Calanthe of Sintra? She just won her first battle at Hoshbuzz. Which is Netflix's hint to you that these are not happening at the same time. It's very clever that they've staggered it that way with little hints in here and there to sort of signify that, hey, no, this isn't all happening at the same time, but it doesn't really click in until much later on kind of thing. But they talk about the Battle of Hotching Buzz having just happened, where Calanthe is 15 when this happens. 
and Calanthe's birth year, according to the Netflix side of things, is 1215. Now, according to law, that is pushed back, uh, pushed forward by about three years, so 1218. But I can see why they've sort of changed little things here and there because it's not too imperative to the storyline for that. So this. This 1231 is where Geralt starts with his meeting of Princess Renfrey and becoming the Butcher of Blaviken. Episode 2, Four Marks, is where Ciri's timeline continues. This is where she is evading Nilfgaard soldiers and she ends up in a Sintran refugee camp for this one. The only reason that I mention that is because it becomes important for like later on. Moving forward from that, you have Geralt's timeline jumping forward from 1231 to about 1240. This is when there is a Netflix timeline, which I will link the actual timeline down below from this particular website. They have it listed at 1240 that he meets Yaskia, and that's when they go and encounter the elves. This particular year doesn't clash with anything, and it does happen to be in between a couple of things that I do have years for. So it wasn't too funny for me to put it there. However, I will say read the timeline with caution because there are some stuff that is incorrect in the Witcher fandom Netflix timeline that I'm talking about here. My timeline is based on as many facts as I can. That being said, feel free to comment if any of my information is incorrect. I will more than happily correct the timeline when I find out new information. But moving on from that, it doesn't really clash with anything, so that's fine to leave it there. Now, this is when you have Yennefer's timeline starting. Her timeline, there is no clear indicator as to how old she is when she starts her tutelage at Aratusa. There is no indication for how long she is at Aratusa for, and there's no indication for what year she starts her tutelage. So, because of that, I've put it in at 12.15 because I suspected that she might have spent about a decade here. The timeline down below lists it at 12.06 with her graduating in 12.10, but that's incorrect and I'll explain why for episode three. So because of that, I've just moved it forward to about the same year that Calanthe was born. But again, there's no real indication as to how long she's there or when she actually starts. So that's just kind of a rough estimate. Um, for that one there. So now we have episode three, Betrayer's Moon, and this is where things start to sort of get unpacked a little bit more. Series timeline continues, I, I have it in quotation marks, it continues with her entering Brocklawn Forest. And the reason I say this is because it is one scene for like 10 seconds at the end of the episode. So it technically classes as her being in the episode. It technically starts the next event in her timeline but the majority of it doesn't actually even happen in this uh, episode here. So that's why I say sort of continues, but she is technically in the episode. Geralt's timeline jumps to about 12.53 for his hunt for the streaker. The law puts Ada the White, who is the young princess who is the streaker. They put her birth in about 12.39. She spends seven years trying to escape from the sarcophagus and then spends another six years terrorizing Temeria. The problem with this is that this puts her, the, the year that the actual fight occurs in, at 1252, which then starts to clash with things later down the line like Ciri's birth and uh, the royal betrothal that uh, Geralt attends and things like this. The other side of it when you go backwards is that Netflix have decided to put Foltes and Ada, like Queen Ada, in at Yennefer's Ascension Ball. Foltes, leave your sister be. Show Madame de Brie some respect. As a sort of like a little niggle that again, these are not happening on the same timeline. The problem with this is that when you go back to law, it then means that there's a long period of time between the Ascension Ball and 1239 when Ada the White is born. Now, you could argue that Yennefer's um, Ascension then is later on, but Yennefer then has to spend another three decades in court before she then starts meeting Geralt and that timeline continues. The other issue that we find when we jump back to Yennefer's timeline, I put it at about 12.25 because when they, when the chapter her are meeting to discuss arrangements for who's going where, they talk about Princess 
Calanthe. King Daggerad has banned mages from Sintra. God knows why. I've heard rumors he's taken ill. Now, if the king dies, perhaps his heiress would be more pliable. Princess. Calanthe. Good luck with that. Word is, she's even more stubborn than her father is. And how she is awfully stubborn. Now, this means that Clancy has to have been born, which is where that Netflix timeline source is incorrect because they list 1210 being her transformation and her ascension, but Clancy isn't born until 1215, which means that the chapter can't have met to discuss where she's going and mention Princess Clancy if it's back in 1210. That's why that's incorrect. But at the same time, you don't really have an age. You just know that Calanthe has to be old enough to have a personality. Her father is sick, so it's got to be relatively close to when she takes over the throne. And because she is a princess, you're sitting there trying to figure it out. You know that she is a queen by the time of her battle at Hotchimbuzz, where she's 15. Through some research, I know that Calanthe is 14 when she takes over the throne, which means you've got this very short time period to play with. So this is where, and again, you've got Foltis and Ada at the Ascension Ball. So they look to be in their tweens, so that 10 to 12 period. They have to be old enough to have had Ada and like young enough to still sort of play into it all. This is why I put it at 12.25. The Netflix timeline also does bring Ada the White's birth back to 12.29, that's why I mentioned that year. The other thing that this does is that by bringing it back 10 years instead, it brings back the time that the hunt for the Striga happens to 12.43. And this happens to be smack bang in between the encounter of the elves and the royal betrothal. So that works and that's why it's it, that's why it's important that that sort of comes back a little bit. So altogether, that's why that comes to being that way. Like, it's, it's just so confusing the way that this timeline sort of just... They throw in little throwaway lines to sort of niggle at the fact that the timelines are not the same. But then they don't think about the repercussions on the other side in regards to it messing with the timeline a little bit. But it's okay, we have managed to sort of piece stuff together, so... The next episode is episode 4, it's called Of Banquets, Bastards and Burials. This is where Ciri really starts to enter the Brocolon Forest and her adventures there start. Geralt's timeline jumps to 1249 for the royal betrothal and the reason that we know this is because we know that Ciri is born in 1250 and it's about nine months prior. You can also go the opposite direction. We know that Calanthe has Pavetta about three years after the Battle of Hotchimbus so that would put it in according to the TV series with the Battle of Hotchimbus happening in 31 would mean that Pavetta is born in 34 and the royal betrothal is her 15th birthday. So 15 years on from that is 1249. So that fits nice and snugly there. And I can see why they've sort of brought that back a little bit, which also explains why they've had to bring back Calanthe's Battle of Hotchimbas and hence her birth year as well there, because they have a throwaway line, throwaway lines, they love these things, but they have a throwaway line in the first episode that Ciri is about the same age that Calanthe was at the Battle of Hotchimbas. You won your first battle in Hotchbuzz when you were my age. Now, according to law, Ciri is actually only 10 when all of her timeline is occurring for this, the first season. So by bringing it back a little bit, it does mean that she's that little bit older. So she's 13, she's closer to that 15 year old age. And it also means that she's a little bit older to be dealing with some of the stuff that's happening. So I can understand why they've done that there um, in bringing that back. Um, and it's, it still doesn't mess with things too much there. Uh, but Yennefer's timeline massively jumps here. She jumps to about 1255 because she has to have spent three decades uh, three decades in court. That I really, really love. That instead I've gotten to spend the last three decades cleaning up stupid political messages. And if we put her ascension at 1225, she's got to be there. You've got to have enough time on the other side for her to have actually left the Brotherhood as well. So... That's where it sort of starts to get tricky because they've brought Yennefer's timeline up to really squish it together. Episode 5 is called Bottled Appetites. This is where so Ciri's journey through Broccolon Forest continues here. It also 
moves on to the next event, which is the reuniting with Mousak. That happens again at the very, very end of the episode. However, the build up information for that, the background information for that, is happening throughout this episode before it actually comes into her timeline there. So you've kind of got that sort of mixing there. Now, this is the episode where uh, Geralt and Yennefer's timelines mush together and come into the same year. This is where Geralt's timeline of Three Wishes from a Gin and Yennefer's timeline of Trapping of a Gin sort of interlock and they, they intermingle at this time. Now, we know that it's in 1257 because Tesea says to Yennefer when he's in the mayor's uh, house all locked up that the rightful heir to Nilf to the Nilfgaardian throne has finally returned. The sound has thrived in the post they should have been yours. The rightful heir returned to Nilfgaard and she's helped him restore He does peace. that in 1257. Now, I'm going to provide a timestamp for where you need to skip to if you don't want to hear this spoiler because this is not a spoiler for the TV series as of yet, but it is a massive spoiler for the lore. So you have three seconds to click that timestamp to move on to the timestamp uh, to bypass the spoilers. But ready? Three, two, one. The rightful heir to the, to the Nilfgaardian throne is actually Ciri's father. There's a whole thing on it. If you want to research it, I highly suggest you go and check out my timeline on timeline graphics or whatever it is. And there is a, the source listed in there where you can read all about it. But basically, he plots to have Pavetta, Siri, and his deaths faked. Only Pavetta suspects that something's wrong, sends Siri off the ship, they get mad, Juni accidentally kills Pavetta, and then escapes and goes back to the throne. Now, when you look at the Netflix side of things as well, it confirms that Pavetta's death is in 1257, the same time as it is in the law. So that's why that that comes so important to be in that, uh, yeah, it's so important to be in that, that little timeline there that, that that's when that occurred. And that's why he, he then, as I said, goes back to uh, take over the throne for Nilfgaard and that is when that occurs there. And they've very cleverly done this in the Netflix series because they don't actually mention his name for obvious reason that this spoils, this is a massive spoiler in regards to all of this sort of stuff here. So, but it also explains why Nilfgaard is pillaging through all of the continent. It's because Dooney is after his daughter. Moving on to the next episode, we have episode 6 called Rare Species. Again, Ciri's timeline is still going on with her reuniting with Mausak, so there's no change for her there. Geralt and Yennefer, we know that a couple of years has passed at least, but they've sort of still been in contact throughout all of this. And... At the same time, you've got a couple of things that sort of indicate when it could possibly be. I've put it at 1262, which is the same as the timeline down below. And this is when they're hunting for a dragon. Now, when you factor in some of the lore around the hunting for a dragon, again, they bring it much earlier, but there's no real reason why it can't be later. But the reason that it has to be later is because, again, a throwaway line that they talk about the rightful heir to the Nilfgaardian throne is starting to, to pillage up through the continent um, and has Sintra uh, as an attacking point on its mind. The rightful son of Nilfgaard has returned burning through the south. With Fingilla as his mage. <laughs> Nilfgaard's a joke. I saw it with my own eyes down in Ebbing. Those zealot freaks are inching closer by the day. Won't be long till they're trying to take Sodin. Next will be Temeria. Radenia. Sintra. No. Queen Calanthe would die before letting them take what's hers. Because of this, you know that it has to be relatively soon to the massacre of Sintra and all of that, which we know from Ciri's timeline is occurring in 1263. So, and again, as I said, Ger Geralt and Yennefer's timeline has merged at this point. There is no divergent. They go off on separate things again in the next episode, but their timeline, their actual years uh, that this is occurring is happening at the same time. Now we have episode 7 which is called Before a Fall. This is where series timeline starts to move more into her actually trying to find Geralt. Uh, it starts with her in, her trying to get to, to Skellige. I think that's how you say it. Her trying to get to Skellige um, and it sort of picks up and continues in the next episode. So her, she is at the final point in her timeline for this particular thing. 
Uh, Geralt and Yennefer, however, are not. They've still got a little bit more to go, but they've gone their separate ways, but they're still in the same year. We know that they're in 1263 at this point because Geralt has gone back to get Ciri and he's imprisoned in Sintra. This is his, his sort of timeline thing, imprisonment in Sintra. And he, at the end of the episode, hears Calanthe fall to her death. So he is smack bang at the same time that series timeline begins, which is really cool that they sort of wrap it all up together. Yennefer, on the other hand, she happens to go back to Aratuza, and before they go into the mages' meeting, I think they call it a conclave or something, but when they go back into their, their meeting, they talk about the fact that the, the Battle of Marnadale has just happened. An emergency conclave of the Northern Mages. Nilfgaard took Marnadale. What? They're attacking Sintra. This is the same battle that Ice loses his life to in the very first episode. So again, as I said, you know that they're right on top of each other at that point. Episode 8 is called Much More, and this is when everything starts to come together. Yennefer is off fighting in the Battle of Sodom. Ciri is with Zola's family, and they're watching the Battle of Sodom happen from afar, and Ciri obviously ends up running into the forest. And the last step is Geralt uh, meeting up at that point. He is, so he leaves Sintra. He then finds a Sintran refugee camp. This is why that's important. And he finds a merchant in amongst them trying to bury the dead bodies. And he says to, to Geralt that they've been dead about a week. I was going home to my family when I came upon these poor souls. Sintran refugees, dead at least a week. Now they're a feast for the crows. So we know that about a week has passed since the Nilfgaard uh, attack on that uh, Sintram refugee camp. And we know that there's been a couple of days there. So that's why I know that the series timeline happens over about a week and a half. And then obviously Geralt gets bitten by a ghoul. It's his section. And he goes forth with the merchant whose wife happens to be Zola, who has Ciri. And obviously they, he finds out that Ciri's gone into the forest. He finds Ciri in the forest. That is where they reunite. And then obviously everything that happens at the Battle of Sodom happens there. And that is where the season ends off. So basically, quick rundown here. When you're looking at a year-based thing, you start with Geralt's birth, obviously, Yennefer's birth. Probably, I, as I said, I can't quite tell when the tutelage at Aratusa happens, but that's when that kind of begins at about the same time that Calanthe is born. You then have uh, Yennefer's ascension to mage. You have Ada the White's birth in amongst all of that. Then you have the meeting of Princess Renfrey, which is episode one. So we've already, we go basically Yennefer's two, Yennefer's three, Geralt's one, Geralt's two, Geralt's three, uh, Technically, Geralt's four, which is the so the three is the hunt for the Striga, which we've determined from Aid of the White's birth. We then go into the royal betrothal, which is Geralt's episode four, um, which leads into Ciri's birth. In there, we then move on in episode four to flash forward a little bit, but it's Yennefer's um, episode four of her protecting Queen Callus. It then moves into episode five where Geralt and Yennefer's timelines can join. You then have episode six where again they're still conjoined a little bit further down the line. You then have them rejoin again, same timeline, but just off in different, uh, different events at the time. Um, but this is their episode seven, but this is also series episode one. And that's where that happens across there. Then it continues with series episode two, three, three, four, five, six, uh, seven and then eight they're all in the same timeline all together at the same time so that is essentially how that breaks down if you want to hear more witcher content i have been doing so much research and it is so interesting to read it all and i'm more than happy to share some of those ideas with you guys as well so if you want to hear more definitely leave a like and a comment down below but if you're just interested in reading it for yourself, as I said, my timeline will be linked down below and you can go and check it out and click each sort of event and see my sort of notes on this side for that one. So aside from that one, I will see you guys later. Bye.